Welcome to our homemade Last Jedi trailer. Here's how we made it. Hey everyone, and welcome to the behind the scenes of The Last Jedi. This trailer has so many cool visuals. It's got X-Wings, TIE Fighters, ATM-6s. My personal favorite of all these builds is Luke walking into the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. And as soon as I saw it, I knew that this was gonna be a fun one to make. So it all starts with cardboard. So each piece was created individually. Cut out little holes, squares and rectangles and stuff like that. Put some colored paper behind those, and then each one was connected to each other with hot glue and cardboard, uh, and then zip tied to a couple C stands so we could actually elevate it off the ground. Then when you blasted light through the back, uh, it looked like all the buttons lit up. Once the cockpit was complete and ready to go, we needed a Luke Skywalker. Luckily enough, we had the one person in the office who had a beard, Mike Truly, agree to be our Luke Skywalker. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So once Luke was done in the Millennium Falcon, we had one more shot to get in the cockpit, and that was with Chewbacca and everybody's new favorite character, the Porg. So to make the Porg, I used a sock, masked off some areas and did some spray paint action, gave it some eyes, a mouth made of foam paper, and little teeth made of tape, and boom, you have the cutest thing you've ever seen. The Chewbacca costume consists of a wig, a mouth made out of cardboard and some vampire teeth, some eyeballs that I blacked out to make it look like he was squinting a little bit. What's up, four eyes? I was originally gonna put this on a foam head, <laughs> but uh, instead I ended up just making it all work on my head. I heard this is exactly like what Robin Williams had to do from her stout front. Okay, this is disgusting. I remember Mark saying that he would do anything for homemade movies. It's probably the creepiest version of Chewbacca you're ever gonna see. All right, Luke, show me what you can do with that cool hand of yours. There's one shot where Luke sticks his metal hand through a bunch of burning debris. So we bought some firewood, John brought in a piece of a dead palm tree that he found outside, and we stuck this cool plastic hand through it. All we had to do was cut its thumb off. Yeah! And it was ready to grip. In this trailer, Kylo Ren throws a fit. We had to find somebody who was capable of being a gigantic baby, and I figured uh, the biggest baby in this office is me. So for the costume, we repurposed some of the old Kylo costume from the Force Awakens trailer that Ben made. <laughs> but comfortable, dude. No, not. But this is how you become who you are. This is how you fulfill your destiny. I added the scar by using a Band-Aid that I colored with marker. Nice wig, dog. Thank you. Uh, he's surrounded by all these white, elongated ovals. Luckily enough, we had a big, giant drawing pad that I was able to make one drawing and cut out a whole bunch of ovals at once. So the first trailer we were gonna do has this clear shot of Kylo's helmet. I made that, and then we decided to do a different trailer that doesn't show his helmet at all. I made this helmet that we're not using except for this shot. Uh, I have uh, Adam Ryder hair in my mouth. Adam Driver. What did I call him? Adam Ryder. Ryder. Adam Ryder. I am Adam Ryder, or Kylo Ren, as you uh, drive. Still got it wrong. What, what did I say? I keep saying Ryder. I don't Who's know. Adam Ryder? This is our spaceship, and we're gonna smash this helmet right over there. Hey buddy, don't hit me with your helmet, huh? Don't hit me with your confetti. When Kylo Ren makes impact with the wall, John is actually hiding behind a black sheet with white confetti that he throws out to simulate the sparks. How do I look? Is it cool? So there's a shot of Kylo's lightsaber, which as you guys know, has flames that go out in three different directions. So I made it out of tubes, I made some holes for air to go through the tubes, and I stuck my vacuum cleaner in the out position, which then pushed the flames out, simulating the effect. While shooting, we flashed a red flashlight on it too to make it glow. For one of the shots with Poe, you see him going up to the window of a spaceship. I made the exterior of the spaceship out of cardboard, and we taped that up to the window wall that we have in our workshop. So casting Poe Dameron was a no-brainer. We have our own in-house Poe Dameron in Dustin McLean. He brought his own costume. He painted one sideburn on his face. Yeah, well, just one, because you don't see this side. <laughs> so I've got one sideburn. And we threw a wig on him. Angela and myself were the background characters. Hey, did you guys see that? This isn't the first time you've done this, is it? No, it is not. In fact, today is the two-year anniversary from when I bought all the materials to make the Poe Dameron costume. Facebook reminded me this morning. Okay, this is the original Poe Dameron. You can check out the Costume Squad episode for that. 
Unfortunately, in this trailer, the only part of that costume that you actually see is the helmet. So we had him put that on and we flashed a few different colored lights on it. Got it. So Ray's got some scenes in this trailer where we see her doing a little sword play. So we got to go outside and actually play in the sun for a little bit. I made some backgrounds out of cardboard. I made the side of a hill, which we then placed right in front of the side of a hill, which actually probably would have worked fine. So in to play Ray is our good friend Francesca. Francesca's been helping out on all of the homemade movies that me and John have been making. And in Stranger Things, she actually had a starring role. Your hair is on point. Here's your lightsaber. Make sure the batteries don't pop out or else it won't work. Okay. Mark made this super sweet lightsaber and I love it. Hot glue, cardboard, Lego pieces, and uh, probably a little spray paint, am I right, Mark? A little bit of spray paint. I took a clear plastic tube and spray painted it blue. Two, one, action. All right, you ready to swing some saber? Hell yeah. Let's do this. It. Yeah, that's the stuff. So to play Finn, I got my next door neighbor, Zach. Since he is my next door neighbor, I just shot both of his shots in my living room. Woo! Really Woo! intense moves. Woo! Playing Princess Leia, we have our good friend, Nar. If you don't recognize Nar by now, you haven't been watching homemade movies. So Princess Leia is only in one shot in this trailer, but it's a pretty involved shot. We shot it down in the office area because we needed a bunch of extras to fill in the background. I made a cardboard control panel, a cardboard hologram, I put some tape on a piece of plexiglass to look like those things that are in those spaceships. Yeah. And then it was time to work on miniatures. A lot of intimidating miniatures in this trailer, but the first one that I had to tackle was all the walkers. Of course, I made it out of cardboard. It took a lot of hands to make this shot happen, uh, and to help us out with some of the leg moves was our friend Clint. The next up was the miniature version of our Millennium Falcon. This was a blast to build. I used some paper plates, some cardboard, some little guns on the bottom, some little googly eyeballs that I spray painted gray. To finish up the cockpit, I actually used a little plastic shot glass, put some foam in the back for a backlight. In this shot, you see the Millennium Falcon flying through a red cave sort of area. I created a bunch of stalagmites with cardboard and then wrapped those in the red wrapping paper that I got from the dollar store. Chasing the Millennium Falcon through this world are some TIE Fighters, so we made some 2D ones out of cardboard and attached those to a wire. Dustin McLean came in and helped us out on laser duty. When you're shooting lasers, it's good to throw a little bit of smoke machine in there. It really makes those lasers pop. We also use this technique for the titles. Titles have this red line that's going through the middle of the frame. In order to do that, we put the letters on some plexiglass. And when you smoke it up and shine a laser through it, it really creates this cool red line that splits up the image. So there's a new planet in The Last Jedi, and it's called Crate. It's a planet with a dusting of salt over a red rubyish base, if I remember correctly. So we laid out a white sheet for the ground and made mountains out of brown paper. So I got my Millennium Falcon on a stick, kind of looks like a Jiffy Pop. And I got my two red lasers taped together so I can have these guns shooting lasers. The Millennium Falcon destroys a TIE Fighter. I made this TIE Fighter out of a little soccer ball and some cardboard, some spray paint, and then we took it outside and actually shot some flames at it. That was the shot right there, yeah. yeah. Kids, please don't play with fire. In this shot, a TIE Fighter is being blown out of the sky. We created the big red dust cloud by cutting a hole in the white fabric, stuffing some tablecloths in between two tables. and then pulling it out with strength. There's one shot where you see Snoke sitting down in his Imperial throne room. I decided to draw that out two-dimensionally, but one guy turns his head over to Snoke, so I cut the head off a G.I. Joe and stuck it through a hole in the cardboard. On the other side, I was able to move his head around. So the last two shots feature Luke and Ray outside in the rain. To make it rain, I connected two PVC pipes together. I drilled a bunch of holes in them and then ran water through. Oh. It's raining. Oh my god. So for Luke's shot, to create the look of wet rocks all around him, we used black plastic bags. 
I put some plastic bags on Mike Truly as well to make it look like he had wet clothing on. To complete the look, we had to wet down Truly's hair. He only had a little bit to wet down, so it wasn't that bad. The way you think. Francesco wasn't so lucky. <laughs> did you do this to Truly? <laughs> nope, uh, we did it. Yeah. Uh, yes, we did. Totally did. Now the main part of Ray's shot is the fact that she has a lightsaber which is illuminating her face. We couldn't use our original design for the outdoor lightsaber because that one didn't light up. So I took the tube out of that one, created a new tube with some foil tape backing, wrapped the whole thing with blue cellophane. I then put two flashlights in either end and illuminated them, which reflected off of the silver tape and really made it look like it was glowing. To add even more light to her face, we had Dustin off screen with a blue flashlight following the blade as it went on. It's over! Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. This is actually the last episode of Homemade Movies, at least for a while, for the time being. But just wanted to personally thank you, every single one of you, for sticking around for as long as you have. I actually started this show five years ago. Started making it out of the house, had so many awesome people contribute over the years, worked hand in hand with Ben, with Bianca's help, and then with Mark, and then now we've got John, and you fans are the best. Love all the pictures you guys send us and everything. Well, if I can echo that, thank you to the audience, thank you to you for starting this and bringing me on in the first place. And uh, homemade movies, as long as it's in your heart, we'll never die. Your haircut's done. This is gonna be the next big costume at Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> nice tie. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> we got Kylo Ren. Oh no! And I hope my current wing doesn't find out about this. <laughs> <laughs> So that was our behind the scenes. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for over the years watching homemade movies and turning it into the show that it's become. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure for me to be working on it, and keep watching Cinefix. This isn't goodbye, it's just smell you later.